Hey everyone, Dustin here with Jagged Brush Studios. Today we're going to paint an operative Luke from Star Wars Legion. Here I've Zenithal primed the miniature, gotten it ready for its first base coat. We're going to start with some matte white. We're going to take this paint and we're going to apply it directly to the lightsaber. Give us a nice base coat for when we apply that green color. Next, we're going to go into Necromancer Cloak. We're going to apply this liberally all over Luke. So take your time. It might take a couple of coats. Make sure you thin your paints out. But we're going to go ahead and cover the entire body with it, as well as his right hand. You'll see in the video if you watch it through that I do miss painting his right hand on video, but I go back and clean it up off camera as I notice it. So this is going to be everything from the arms, the boots, the back, the pants, and the right hand. So he's got a gloved right hand. Next we're going to go into this jungle green. It's a nice bright green. It's a very close match for the saber, but paint this on with a thin coat. You probably have to do it three or four times for it to get good coverage, so come back and cover it as you do other layers. Gunmetal, one of my favorite army painter metallics, is up next. We're going to use this on the saber. We're going to get the cover the whole handle with it, make sure to get into a few different places, including in between his hands and underneath. Also, we are going to use this to pick up some of the little bits on his belt. Um, he's got some little loops and some hooks on there, and then to outline the belt level with as well. Up next, we're going to put our first base coat down using this Barbarian Flesh color. It's a good dark flesh tone color. I'm going to do this miniature without any washes, but you could use washes if you wanted. But we're going to apply this Barbarian Flesh right onto the hands as well as the face. Um, like I said, you can see where I corrected that black right hand to a glove. So cover the hand and the face. You'll probably need about two coats to get decent coverage. Next we're going to work on Luke's hair. Um, he's got a nice dark brown hair color, so we're going to use some oak brown. Again, a color that probably will need a couple of coats, so mix it up well and get that applied to his hair. Stone Golem, we're going to use this on the little flap on his chest piece that folds over. So we'll paint that little triangle, and you should be able to get it in one coat, but make sure it's thin enough that it doesn't look splotchy. With 
with our base coat done, we're going to move on to our highlights and our details. And the first step that we're going to do here is to grab some of this weapon bronze. And there's a very small part on Luke's saber in between the handle and right above, right below the blade that is bronzed. So definitely an optional step, but you can do that for that extra detail if you want. Spaceship exterior is up next. It's a little lighter than that stone golem, and we're just going to put a little bit of a highlight right onto that flap. It's really not noticeable, but um, it adds a little bit of extra detail overall. We're also going to come back and we'll use this color for the eyes. Um, here you'll see me paint in the eyes. I know it could be a little bit hard to see, but um, they're going to be painted larger than they need to be initially. Um, so just kind of fill in that eye socket with the eyes, and then I go back into my black or necromancer cloak color, and I'm going to paint my pupils in. And the way I do my pupils is just a direct line up and down. There's no nothing fancy to it. Just make a straight line up and down across the pupils. Make sure they, they look symmetrical and that they're looking in the same direction because it stands out real bad if you don't. Once I'm done with putting in the pupils, I'm going to grab my Barbarian Flesh or my base tone, and then I'm going to uh, use that to mask in the eyes to the size that I want them to be. So I paint them large intentionally so I don't have to worry about fine small details and messing up, and then I color over them with my Flesh Tone when I'm done. For our first skin highlight, we're going to get this tan flesh, and then we're going to mix it roughly 50-50 with our um, base tone that we were using. And then we're going to put these on almost all of the upturned places of our skin. So the top of the hands and the face is going to be, I'd probably say, 70% covered with this. Make sure you thin it out well enough that it doesn't look clumpy when you apply it, but also don't thin it too far, otherwise you're going to have to do a whole bunch of uh, layers over it and it's harder to do when it's highlighted. So here I do the hands and then I'll move on to the face in just a moment. The only parts of the face that you want to leave not highlighted here with this new color is the parts that are um, turned down towards the ground. So, um, any of course, the bottom of the chin won't get it. The underneath of the the eye sockets won't go get it. So, you know, right below the eyebrows, the bottom of the nose, things like that. But definitely, you're gonna paint most of the face here. Make sure you get that bottom of the chin as well, or the you know where the chin points out. Next, I'm going to go into probably a, a two to one mix of that tan flesh to the barbarian um, flesh, and then I'm going to go back into my face and I'm going to highlight some more of the areas up. Again, make sure it's thinned out enough that you can blend it well. But we're probably going down to about 40% of the skin tone areas getting this applied to it. So getting gradually higher and higher. Make sure you hit those cheekbones, the bridge of the nose, the sides of the nostrils. Those things are going to be real important. As well as a bit on the hands. This model in particular has a couple of crease lines that run on either side of the mouth. And it's really easy to miss, but it gives great detail if you're able to pick those out. And on the hands, there's a one knuckle right below the top knuckle that you can get. Elven Flesh is going to be our next skin tone highlight. We're going to put that on the palette, and then we'll mix it roughly 50-50 with that tan flesh. We'll get the hands with it. And then we'll go into our face, and we're probably down to about 20% of highlights with this 50-50 blend of tanned flesh and elven flesh. Um, bridge of the nose, but a little bit smaller little dots on the sides of the, the nostrils, the cheekbones for sure, right up under the eyes, and um, we're probably going to leave the chin alone here, so don't, don't get it too much with it, but make sure you're not covering too much of an area. And 
I'm showing you more of these faces because it's really, really where the detail can pop. Uh, people are going to look at the face of the miniature, so make sure you spend a little extra time on that. You see me going back to some of my darker tones to cover up places where maybe I accidentally went over with the highlight too much. Here I'm going in with an almost pure Alvin flesh tone color, and I'm going to touch up some of the, just the very peak points of the highlight. So again, don't overdo this part, it'll make your colors look washed out. I'm going to take some of my oak brown and I'm going to mix it in with my base flesh tone, that barbarian flesh, and I'm going to make some shadows. Um, this is in lieu of washing. You could use a wash as an alternative. If you do use the wash, I would recommend you do so prior to um, your highlighting. So here I'm taking the 50-50 the mix of oak brown and flesh tone and picking out some of those recesses, so the, the bottom of the jawline, underneath the nose, and the chin, and then trying to get those lines right along the crease along the mouth. Don't forget to shade the upper parts of your eye sockets, but make sure you don't get them over your eyes. I'm also going to take this color and outline the face with it right along where the face meets the hair and the, the clothing, and it just provides a little bit of shadow right where those two pieces touch. Make sure to take that same color and shadow underneath your hands. Next we're going to do this desert yellow and we're going to use this to highlight the hair. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do what I call, or I think they call overbrushing. I'm going to get some of that really thick paint on my brush, brush it off onto a paper towel so it's mostly off but it's still there, not so much as dry brushing. And then I'm going to take the side of my brush and brush it along the ridges. And then later what I'll do is I will take the oak brown and I'll mix it real thin with water and once that desert yellow dries, I'll go over it with the oak brown wash that I created on my palette to blend it back in again. But it makes real good hair highlights. It's time to start working on highlighting our black. I like to use blue, crystal blue here, as a highlight for my blacks. It really just kind of gives it a, a bit of a color differential and breaks up some of the black colors. So here I'm probably working with a two to one ratio of black to crystal blue, thinning it out and applying it to the most upturned areas of my black. Make sure you don't overdo it with this blue-black ratio, otherwise it's going to make your miniature look blue. So I would say no more than 40% of your miniature needs to be covered with this blue-black color.
here I'm going to mix in a little bit of the spaceship exterior and make it more of a gray color to highlight the leather boots with. I want them to feel like they have a little bit more reflection so they look like they are leather rather than cloth. So uh, highlight them and then I do blend them back in with just a little bit of black. Time to go back into our spaceship exterior to make it a little bit lighter and I'm going to use this lightest color to pick out just the extreme highlights on the boots. Again, like I said, we want to show that light reflecting off of the creases in the boots. And I'm also focusing on as if the miniature was being lit from the way that Luke is facing. So keep that in mind when you're applying your highlights here. I'm also going to take this around and we will highlight the top of the belt around back. Um, you'll see that in just a moment. Don't forget to highlight the glove tips as well, so the fingertips and the top of the thumb. Time to go some more crystal blue. We're going to finish our black highlights, so this is probably roughly a 50-50 mix of crystal blue and black. And we're going to be real sparing here. Roughly 10% of our miniature is going to be this color. Otherwise, you really will make it look blue. So the extreme highlights are what we're going to hit here. Necromancer Cloak to bring back some of those shadows that we had. You could even go with a matte black if you wanted to, but I'm really focused. I'm really focusing on putting this Necromancer Cloak into the recesses of the miniature, so really kind of doling down some of that blue where I may have gone over too much. And finally, I'm going to do my lightsaber highlights, and I'm going to take some of that jungle green and mix it with um, spaceship exterior in a couple different stages until I'm happy with a lightsaber core that looks like it is glowing white. Um, I do do this while it's still wet on the miniature to help blend some of those things together. So um, you, you shouldn't have to wait too much. Um, what you're saying is me real time painting this. So this is the amount of time I spent putting that highlight onto that saber. And here's the finished product one operative loop that I would be very happy to put on my tabletop. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this painting tutorial and the new format that I'm putting in place. Um, hope to see you all next time and um, get out there and paint some more.